Okay. Hello, my name is uh, Varda Shoam and I'm the CEO of Amen Organization, the Israeli Organization for Myeloma Patients and Their Caregivers. The organization started 16 years ago and uh, it was founded by Paula Azulai, which is not with us anymore, but she was the founder. And she is the first uh, one to make the connection with the MPE organization. Today, I would like to share with you the effects of the con coronavirus on myeloma patients and their families in Israel. And I would like to talk about the activities that we took during this period. As you know, uh, the, we started on uh, March in Israel to see the first cases of uh, coronavirus and the patients were in panic. There was a lot of uncertainty and fear. The patients didn't know if they should go to the hospital for treatment. They didn't know if they should stop the treatment. They have a lot. Uh, of, they had a lot of questions uh, about it. We got a lot of phone calls, and once the vaccination arrived to Israel, they didn't know if they should get and get uh, vaccinated. Uh, I think in no time we started to adapt the Zoom sessions. And it was a great solution for us. We started with uh, weekly Zoom sessions with doctors in purpose to reduce the panic. So every week, another doctor from a different hospital would give a session in the Zoom and patient could, could ask questions and get answers. In addition, we started kind of telemedicine, which was not really organized, but uh, the doctors started to communicate with uh, the patients by email, by phone, and they asked them, the patients, to make tests in the outpatient uh, uh, clinic near their house to send them the results, and they decided together if the patient should arrive for treatment or he can postpone the treatment. There were initiations in some hospitals regarding uh, getting Velcade injection. The patient uh, came in their cars to the parking lot and the medical uh, nurse went down to give them an uh, injection, which was really a very uh, amazing initiation. We started, uh, I think, one month after the coronavirus uh, started in Israel, we started with a special project, a project of uh, transportation for patients that didn't have their own cars because there was no public transportation. And if it, there was a public transportation, we, we the doctors uh, told them not to get into public transportation. So we started to take special cars and to take the patients to hospital for treatment and back to the home. It was a very complicated project and we did about uh, more than 1,500 uh, <clears throat> uh, trips. In addition, in the beginning, there was a lack of masks so we imported uh, masks and we sent them to the hematology unit. So that the immediate uh, activities that we did. After a few months, we decided that we are going uh, to uh, uh, get the face-to-face -face meetings that we had in the past for support to patients and their family members to put to do it in, in Zoom. 
we started and it was very successful because patients in the periphery that couldn't participate before because the, the meeting were in three centers in Israel, started to uh, participate. And also patients that could not reach the various centers because they uh, could not live uh, physically, they could not leave the house, they started to participate in this workshop. So this workshop, we maintain weekly workshop and it's very successful. We started also with the uh, other workshop that uh, we didn't do before in nutrition, in patient rights, because it became very easy to make uh, all these activities in Zoom. We don't need to uh, rent a place. We don't need to move patients from their home to the center where we make the, the meeting. So it became very easy to make this uh, workshop. And we continue up to now with medical information once every three weeks. So right now our calendar is full. We have at least two to three sessions every week. Another activity that we started is to contact with patients through phone calls. We made phone calls to all our patients to see what their needs and to see how they're doing. And patients really liked it. And I must tell you that we are going to continue with this project. Once a year, every patient will get from us a phone call. We also uh, started to give a technological assistance for patients that have difficulties to adapt the virtual method of communication. As you know, many patients are uh, old and uh, they didn't grow up with this uh, method of uh, communication. So we started to give them assistance. We also have a special a section in our website with all the relevant information about uh, uh, COVID-19, about Arctic. Uh, we give them some uh, translated articles. We have some uh, authorities' instructions. We have advice from peer-to-peer -peer members, and we answer questions of our patients. What our conclusions are? I think uh, virtual support will continue to be a primary resource. I think we will uh, go back to face-to-face -face meeting around October, but also people that will not be able to join it will be able to access it through Zoom session. And also people that live in the periphery and uh, will use it, this system. I think, as I told you, patients enjoyed the communication with the main staff, and we are going to implement regular phone calls to check in on patients. And all informational sessions, including our uh, yearly convention and our uh, convention in the, that we are doing uh, at least four times a, a year, in different hospitals will be hybrid. So thank you very much and good luck. And I hope all of us are vaccinated up to now.